going guys and welcome back to Trailmakers. In this how-to video we're going to be looking at basic logic. I know a few of you in the comment section have said that you wanted to see some basic logic on how to use logic. I'm the last guy honestly to show you how to use logic and make a tutorial on logic but uh, I'll show you how I use the logic blocks that I use. I only use a few of them in there. I don't use the AND gate or the OR gate. I know it has a lot of power. If you use those properly, you can make calculators and all kinds of stuff, computers, uh, all kinds of interesting things. But I will show you how I use the ones that I use, and it'll hopefully help a lot of you beginning players or anybody that wasn't aware of how to do these certain things. They're pretty simple things, but uh, these are the applications that I use. So first things we're going to start with is the very things. It's going to be a seat. Always indestructible. Don't want to be getting kicked out. So, in the logic tab here, the ones I use the majority of the time are going to be the speed sensor, the distance sensor, the XOR gate, and the angle sensor. I rarely use the altitude sensor unless I need something to go off at a certain altitude. Uh, as far as stabilizing yourself in the air, like if you want to stay at certain altitudes, you don't really use the altitude sensor for that unless you're, there's a set altitude you need to be at for something to happen or to prevent something from happening but I rarely ever use it. So let's start with the basic simple one where you don't even really need to really do much for it to have a, a decent effect. So we'll start with a speed sensor, face it down, put it on the four corners of your seat, select them all, and to select them all you're holding control. Come up here to your configure tab, now down here we're going to configure those, we're going to leave the output to 1 and the speed we are going to set to 0.1. So any slightest downward motion that it detects moving, falling downwards, it's going to activate. And what it's going to activate, again the simplest way to show this where it's actually stable, we'll just slap a gimbal on top of it. Now the gimbal itself under the configure tab is set to space so that's fine we'll leave it on space but we're going to select these four individually you can't select more than one uh, logic gate to connect it to another or configure it with another cube so we're going to select our gimbal so that one activates the gimbal select this one configure this one will activate the gimbal now you can instead of hitting the configure button every time just simply switch to this Connect it to that, select our next one, connect it to that. Now, when I go to build this into the world, as soon as it starts to fall, all four of those will simply activate this gimbal jet. Now if I get in the seat and hit the space bar, the gimbal jet takes me up. If I let go of the space bar, see that those four act as again that's the beauty of gimbals is that they pull straight up and not to the left or to the right so they're the best thing to use for stabilization but you can see that with very little programming we just connect these four speed sensors to the gimbal and as far as it wants to fall down it won't let it it does fall super 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 slow 0 0.1 kilometers an hour but if you've got a, another gimbal on there, it'll actually give enough lift, it'll actually pull it up slightly in the air. So again, used with uh, an angle sensor and uh, some small thrusters, you can actually stabilize a craft pretty easily. So that's the easiest way to use your speed sensors. So, but again, if you tip forward, they're not facing down. It's actually pretty stable. Can't even make myself fall out of the sky. Fine, I'll just jump out of the seat then. Screw you. All right, come back down here. So that's the simplest way to use a speed sensor in the logic gates. So, next thing we're going to do is let's look at our next. So let's let's go with our angle sensor. Let's throw an angle sensor in the middle. Throw one on that side. Copy one onto this side. And again, we're going to select them both by holding control while we click on them. Go to our configure tab. <clears throat> we're going to leave the, we'll set the direction to 90. We have 90 degrees. And our width, normally 180, 
but what that does is that's going to give you a small amount of play. It's going to want to go back and forth from this one to this one to this one to this one. And we're going to set up a couple of uh, small thrusters on this as well. So I try to set it to 181, 185 maybe, 190 at the most if you've got a lot of weight that you're trying to balance. So what that'll do with a helicopter engine, that'll keep both of them spinning if you set it more than 180 degrees. Both will continuously spin in the opposite direction, giving you centrifugal balance as well as when you cross that 190 degree threshold, one turns off and the other one activates. So it still acts as the stabilizer when it's off and when it's on. So that's above 180 degrees. So I'm going to set this to 185. And if you set it above 180 degrees, make sure to set your thrusters or your helicopter engine, whatever it is that you're using as a stabilizer the, for torque. Make sure to set that low to begin with because it's going to, again, want to overcompensate for that number being over, right? So we're going to set these to 185, direction is 90, we'll click off. We can see here we got the blue on the back, here we got the blue on the back as well, so we'll just select this, hold down Alt, give that a spin so our blue is on the front. So the easiest way to remember how to use a, to set up for a uh, angle sensor where you need your thrust, let's grab us a couple of little uh, thrusters here. Rotate these. So we're going to face it down. This one's going to be over there. So we got it on the outside corner. We'll rotate this one. Bring it over here. Select both of these. Copy them to the back. Now, again, these are automatically set up as space as our configure. So let's try building it into the world again here. Now, this one gimbal obviously isn't going to be enough to hold us in the air. As you can see, we fall. But that's where we're going to set up our small thrusters. When the small thrusters are going, as you can see, we have lots. Let's see, there's a little craft just in itself. And we want to keep itself stable because of those uh, speed sensors holding the, activating that gimbal. And then your small thrusters could be used as thrust for whatever direction you're facing. But anyways, we'll go down to the spawn point here. So to configure these angle sensors, Best way to think about it is the dark side of the angle sensor, whoever the dark side is, is the side that's going to need support. So I select this angle sensor, go to our configure tab. So I want it to activate these thrusters on the back side where it's the dark side of the angle sensor. So on this side, select this one, dark side is going to be the front. So we need, we know we need the thrust there on the front. So now let's build that into the world and have a quick look. Oh, look at that. So see, there's the overcompensation again with the more than 180 degrees, the 185. So if I were to jump in here and build, and let's just set these to 180. It'll give us a little bit of air here. Now you can see that sits fairly level. Now the beauty of the logic gates is they're they take over the use of the thrusters and the gimbal when you're not doing anything. But you still have control over those individual components. The space bar still makes the thrusters go and it still makes the gimbal active as well. So a great way to be able to test your devices to see if they work properly, if they're functioning properly on their own. That the spawn point here is to say for the gimbal, I can go in here and deactivate space so that there is no button that I can push to activate it. Same thing with our mini thrusters here. We can deactivate all of those controls so that they do nothing, and then we can build it in, hop in. I can hit space. I can. Uh, I have steering somewhat from the seat, but I can't go up in the air anymore because I no longer have control of those. So let's try with just the gimbal. Set that to space. Now that will get us up, and then when I stop. It'll hold us in the air. Now I can use the seat rotation to tilt the seat. Again, it's a small enough, light enough craft that you can just use the seat steering. But again, two easy ways to use some simple basic logic there. Those two cubes, the speed and the angle sensor. Go back to this spawn point and see what else we got here. So another of these that I use quite often is the, uh, the distance sensor. So the distance sensor is great for 
auto. It's good for hovercraft. It's good for anything that's close to the ground. They have a maximum range on them in the configure tab of 50 meters, which is not a lot at all. But it's still good for things close to the ground, hovercraft, and the such, and the like. Things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a couple of these underneath. Actually, we can even just use one, but we used two. Why not? Keep it concentric and symmetrical. So we got two sensors facing down. Naturally, they're automatically configured for, oh, they're set for one. So we will set it at, let's say, two meters. And just so everyone knows, one block or one square is 0.3 of a meter. So one meter would be three blocks high. So two meters, that should be six feet off the ground. So we'll set that one. We'll set this one for two meters as well. And then we're just gonna connect these to our click on configure. These two back ones. Click on this one, configure. Connect it to these two front thrusters. So now what this should do for us is we should stay a minimum. Now I don't even need to have this set to anything. We can take the controls off of the gimbal because when I build it in, those sensors will automatically tell it to fire whenever it's within six feet of the ground. So let's, let's jump back in here. Whoa, what are you doing? Settle down. <clears throat> so this is where something, so now I have to use the seat steering because I don't have any controls. There's nothing on the gimbals, nothing on the thruster. So it wants to keep us six blocks off the ground, regardless of whether I'm doing anything or not. Again, I have no control. I can't go up anymore, but if I had some forward-facing thrusters and some hover pads on there, you can see how this would be pretty stable, and it doesn't let you get any closer to the ground without activating those thrusters that are going to keep you up off the ground. So that's three different forms of logic block that are super simple to use and in an applicable situation like this where you can use them. So let's go back into build mode here. What we're going to do now is we are going to... Let's add some extra pieces on here. Here we do like a, one of these sticking out the back. Uh, maybe something like, uh, like this. Okay, so another a prime example for using an XOR gate is to give control, alternate controls, to something that already has controls. So let's say for an example, a great example is a plane. So let's say you have a plane and you've got a couple of servos on either side of the body that you're using for your wings, for your lift. So, you got a wing over there, and a, come on now, got a wing over here. Extend this one out here. So we're gonna program this one here. This servo is simply gonna be red going back, which means that's gonna give us lift up. So we're gonna set red as S and this one as W. Speed is gonna be set slow to 0.1. Angle can be 45, that's like super amount. Ah, now we'll set that to 30. 45 is a little extreme. So that's that one now. This one here, green is gonna give us lift. So green is gonna be S and down gonna be W. Speed gonna be at 0 0.1 at 30 degrees again. So now if we build this in here we can see <clears throat> Look at that. See, we done did invented something. So if I tilt forward, my wings tilt forward like this, I pull back and I get some lift. So if I had a thrust under there, I could, I could give myself some thrust. So now if I needed steering for roll, other than the seat steering, which is doing this. If you wanted to add roll, but you don't want to add more servos to add extra controls, that's where your wonderful XOR gate comes in. Again, you'll need one for each servo because they're facing the same or yeah, opposite directions, so they have opposite rotation. So we'll take this one that's right here, slap it on the back, right there, and we're gonna connect it to this one here. So under the configure tab with your XOR gate connected, we're just gonna select this one right here. And again, we have our red and green, as we still have our XOR gate selected. 
And all we're going to do is now find out, okay, so this one is green rotate forward. So when that one rotate forward, that's going to turn us to the right. So then we want green to be to the right. So I'm going to select this XOR gate. Configure. Green is going to be D. Red is going to be A. And everything else is fine. So we will grab a second XOR gate. And slap it on there. And again, I'm sure there's other, uh, probably a thousand ways to do this with different things. But this is the way I do it. So this might be easier to understand to some of you. It might be more applicable in certain situations because these are really simple situations. So take what you want from it. Leave the rest. I know, but I know there's, you can do magnificent things with these things. So we'll select our second one. Well, actually, let's have a look here. So we know that green is going to be back and going up. So when we want to turn, red is going to drop this wing down. So we're going to turn to the left. So red is to the left. We'll select this XOR gate. Connect it to that servo. Red is to the left, which is A. The green is going to be D. So now, without having to actually change the controls on the original servos themselves, build this in. Get over here. So we still have our up and down lift. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to get rid of these. Adios, amigos. And so W and S will still give you your lift and your, your up and your down for your plane wings. But now your A and D give you individual controls. As you can see, the XR gates are being active, which now gives you your roll as well on those servos all in one. So that's what I've found the XOR gate is the most useful is when you want to apply another control to something that already has controls. So, and also if you want your, let's say for example, you don't want these to rotate as much as they do when you're looking for lift, right? So say when you want your, your roll, you want it to be only half as strong or to rotate half as far. So by selecting your XOR gate, you can come in here to your output and select this to 0.5 if you want only half of the amount of roll that's pre-programmed into that servo. Same thing with here. Configure that to 0 0.5. And now, when you go to roll, you actually only get half of the movement as compared to the full movement when you're using your W and S. So that's where I found it handy in planes. So you can set up your control systems in one set of servos and just have those smaller cubes hidden in the body somewhere. All right, so last but not least, let's take a look at another use for the XOR gate, which you may have seen from the other videos. I'll post a link to it up here on how to make a missile. This was the first time that I used a, uh, an XOR gate. So when you're making a missile and you're using a detachable block, we'll put a detachable block on the front of our machine here. And we'll just, let's see, we'll just build a super quick projectile of sorts. We'll put one of these, and then, like, um, a couple of these on either side, and, um, then we put, like, um, like a pointy end on it, like this, and, um, maybe, maybe a couple, a couple fins on the top. So now I could detach this with uh, 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 we're gonna say number one. Number one gonna to toggle, make sure that that thing disconnect. But as soon as I disconnect, I have no control over this jet or this jet. Doesn't matter what the what the settings are now. As soon as I disconnect this, this becomes dead to me. So the way to get around that is Mr. Wonderful Exol Gate. I guess I got one back there, but okay, we'll grab a new one here. Now remember, one side of your XOR gate that's got the image on it doesn't have any con connection points on it, so you'll need to either face that up or down where you don't need connections. We want to select this or XOR gate, configure it to these two jets that are going to be taken off. Now I normally set for missiles or projectiles, I will set the XOR gate that's on that projectile to the same control as the detachable block that's releasing it so that they release at the same time. It releases and then and it also activates the jets as well. So that means that we're gonna set green to number one. 
going to set that to toggle. You can toggle it or not. It doesn't really matter. Once you start it, it starts. So we'll set that to number one. And that's basically all there is to that. We can build that in. We can jump in here. If we hit number one. So you can see that it automatically detaches itself and engages those thrusters. But it keeps them engaged once it's no longer connected to you. This is how you make missiles. Rockets. Once again, number one. Fires it up, detaches it, and away it goes. So that was the first way that I ever used an XOR gate. Because I saw missiles and projectiles, and I wanted to know how you do that. So that is basically the all the ways that I really use logic. It's not super complicated, but it is applicable. So I hope that helped you guys out. I hope you guys learned something new. Uh, it's always fun trying, uh, trying new things with the logic gates. Uh, I'm still learning a lot myself, so... Uh, if I, uh, as I learn more, I'll definitely let you guys know how I'm using it and uh, the potential that you can do with it. There are other videos out there as well, so uh, feel free to take a look for other tutorials on using Logic. I know there's a few good ones out there. Soul Reaper's got a good one out there. Uh, and just have a look. I'm sure there's others as well. All right, so we're going to leave that one here. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helped you out. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that like button, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.